There were 10,000 people with all different types of strong. Some showed their strength through tears, and some through their words and song. Strength came from many different places, from far away to here at home. All the same reminders that we would never be alone. We will always remember the two who made us one. The two who united a community. The two who gave us strength to carry on. I have the strength of Gracie. I have the strength of Dom. And I will always remember. With them, I'll always be strong. There were 10,000 people with different types of strong. We have the strength of Gracie. We have the strength of Dom. We are Gracie strong. We are Dom strong. Hello, I am Frank Blackwell, father of Dominic Blackwell. And I am Brian Muehlberger, father of Gracie Muehlberger. Last year, over 10,000 community members came together to honor, to pray for, and to remember Dominic and Gracie. Dominic and Gracie united a community on that day and continue to unite us. As we remember Gracie and Dominic today, it's important that we have that same spirit of unity with us. Unity of Community Day is a day to remember and honor Gracie and Dominic through service and support to our community. We are strongest when we serve and help others. We have dozens of worthy nonprofit and service organizations that provide so much needed help and support to our community. These organizations work hard to ensure all members of our community are healthy and well. We hope you and your family will reach out to our local service organizations and volunteer support service through service or mon monetary donations in memory of Dominic and Gracie. Today, you will hear from students from across our valley who are already modeling the importance of service. And we hope this is something you will do as an active way to honor and remember Dominic and Gracie. If you are a local nonprofit or a service organization in need of help, please reach out to Mr. Ferry, principal of Saugus High School. You can get his contact information from the school's webpage. He will be sure to include you in future Unity of Community Days. We wish we were all together to remember, honor, and love Gracie and Dominic. Our virtual remembrance will miss the hugs and support from friends and strangers. But we hope Unity of Community Day will be a special way to remember our children who united a community. United a community to be Dominic Strong. United a community to be Gracie Strong. Thank you for being part of our remembrance tonight. Hello, I am Katie Tanate, the ASB president of Saugus High School. And I am Andre Mojica. I am an alum of Saugus High School and past ASB president. We will be hosting the Unity of Community Day, our one year remembrance of Gracie and Dominic and our school's tragedy. At this time, I ask you to please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance led by Andrew Gardetto and the 782nd Junior ROTC color guard and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Saugus High School Choir Director, Ms. Katie Holt. Stand by, hug, attend, hug, right shoulder, arm. Colors, ready, hug, hug, hug. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night 
that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Thank you, Andrew Gardetto, the 782nd Junior ROTC, and Ms. Holt. At this time, I want to welcome and thank Superintendent Coleman for all of the support he has given to Saugus High School and all of the students in the Hart District. Welcome, Mr. Coleman. Hello, I'm Mike Coleman, the Superintendent of the Hart District, and I'd like to welcome you to this day of remembrance, the unity of community. It's hard to believe that it's been a year since that tragic day, November 14th, 2019. And although some time has passed, our commitment to honor the precious lives of Dominic and Gracie has not diminished. We cannot and will not forget you. It seems appropriate in the midst of all the craziness that's happening in our world that we stop and remember you are both so very missed. On this anniversary, we also acknowledge the tremendous courage of Addie and Andrew and Mia, who in their own bodies bear the scars of this great tragedy. Your perseverance in the face of such impossible circumstances gives us hope. And we also recognize that there are countless others whose unseen internal wounds persist to the staff and students at Saugus High School and the families of the injured and lost, we stand with you still. May we all commit to continually supporting one another down this long road to recovery. There's a song that I listened to in the wake of the tragedy. A father grieving over the sudden loss of his child declares, out of these ashes, beauty will rise. I'd like to thank the Blackwell and Muehlberger families for designing a remembrance that seeks to grow something beautiful from the ashes of their incalculable grief. Thank you as well for the countless support providers whose actions have reminded us that there is strength in a community that supports one another. No words, no program, no anniversary remembrance can repair that which was irreversibly broken by that horrible event on November 14th. But we can act together to build a better community moving forward. We invite you to join us in these unity of community activities to translate our remembrance into positive action. And in so doing, we can ensure that indeed, beauty will rise from the ashes. Thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Coleman. In preparing for tonight, we wanted to hear the students' voices. So we asked students to submit original pieces of poetry that capture what unity of community means to them. We had dozens of submissions, and from those submissions, we have asked Brock Gellis to read his poem titled Silver and Blue. Please join me in welcoming Brock Gellis. Silver and Blue. Centurions are united, me and you. Whether inflicted by a melancholic gloom, us centurions persevere through and through. We commemorate the fallen, true members of our crew. Although times may be hard, our unity as a community is something we truly cannot discard. For without a community lies no opportunity. The opportunity to thrive together, live together, laugh together, communicate together, improve together, struggle together, mourn together. Must I go on? Power is in numbers. Whose voice is more powerful, two people or one? How are tasks completed faster by two people or one? Who is more likely to be successful? a group of people, or just one individual. Incorporating more individuals into a group for a purpose is always more conducive to success. This principle is no greater displayed than in the unity of a community. Our community here at Saugus is spectacular. We have all been tested in unprecedented ways, but just like diamonds, pressure enables the true beauty within each individual. 
silver, and blue. Although symbolic to our school, I find these colors create a new symbolic meaning in the present day. Blue, just as water in the ocean, when pressure is exhibited upon the mass of water, the water molecule's cohesive properties enable to almost cradle the impact and remain as a whole. This cohesive glue is just like our community. We had pressure, however, we have supported each other and that has allowed us to persevere. Silver. Silver is both precious and valuable. These traits are present in each individual in the community. This is why the bigger and more united a community gets, the stronger we are together. So as we collect here today, which path shall we undergo? Shall we split off and separate ourselves from society, going through the vast unpredictable cascade of events and emotions that we consider life? Or shall we unite together as a community and tackle the hardships of life together? The decision is up to every single individual, but we must remember that community cannot stand without unity. Thank you, Brock, for sharing your beautiful and inspiring words. After our tragedy, the one thing we learned at Saugus High School is that we are not alone, and it seemed like all of our schools became one. In that same spirit, tonight the Heart District Choir, under the direction of Miss Holt, has come together to sing You Will Be Found. Please join me in welcoming the Heart District Choir. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? Come streaming in, cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again. If 
Thank you to all of our junior high school and high school choirs for coming together and singing such a beautiful song. At the entrance of Saugus High School, we have what we call an honor wall. This honor wall is designed to recognize the selfless work of our first responders. At this time, Assistant Principal Marcus Garrett will present the newest addition to our honor wall. Inside Saugus High School, we have what you is known as the honor wall. On the honor wall, we have the names of first responders who are graduates of Saugus High School who serve our community so well. In a moment, Assistant Principal Marcus Garrett will be adding some additions to our honor wall. But first, what I wanna do is note some heroics of some individual staff members on that day that have been well noted. Jerome Castaneda, Jim Mercadante, Venetia Colwell, Jim Klipfeld, Marcus Garrett, Terry LaJusa, and Katie Holt. All staff members who went above and beyond in assisting that day. But we had a lot of staff members as well that went above, above and beyond in that day also. And at this time, I'm gonna welcome Mr. Garrett as we present our newest plaque to our honor wall. Thank you, Mr. Ferry. Um, so as Mr. Ferry mentioned, we're here today because we would like to unveil a, a new plaque that we're adding to our wall of honor. And this plaque is being set up just to recognize all of the first responders, uh, fire, law enforcement, uh, paramedics who were here to help us and take care of Saugus High School on November 14th. So I don't know if we've gotten a chance to peek at it, but right here, we just wanna say that with our deepest gratitude and admiration, we honor teachers, staff, students, community members, and first responders who selflessly served others with courage, honor, and self-sacrifice under extraordinary circumstances on November 14, 2019. Now, there are three particular individuals who came here to Saugus High School who are law enforcement officers, but they were not working that day. They saw that there was a problem here at our school, and they responded off duty, on their own, in street clothes, and came and kept us safe after what happened on November 14. So one at a time, I'd like to bring each, each one of these gentlemen up and just recognize them and offer them a small token of thanks for their service to us. The first person we would like to talk to is Deputy Dan Finn, Detective Dan Finn from the LA County Department, the Sheriff's Department. So Detective Finn, we just wanna just really thank you for being here as one of the first people who stepped on our campus after what happened in November. Thank you. Um, it, it's humbling. Um, I appreciate it. Saugus has a has always had a special place in my heart. Uh, both my daughters attended Saugus High School, um, so 
I, I, I will say this, that the heroes that day were truly your students. Um, they were phenomenal. And um, I appreciate all the recognition that you have provided, not only myself, but my department um, over the past year. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Coming immediately with uh, Detective Finn was an off-duty officer from the Inglewood Police Department. His name is Sean Yanez. So Mr. Yanez, again, we at Saugus High School just really appreciate your willingness and your capacity to come here and keep all of us well after what happened on November 14th. So thank you. And this is just a small token, a shadow box of a memento from Saugus High School to let you know our gratitude. I just want to say thank you for the shadow box. Uh, I appreciate all the support after what happened that day, but I think the thing that I learned most was how important Saugus as a community was to me. Just to see the number of firemen, the police personnel, uh, EMTs, first responders, the teachers, the staff here at the school, they came together and they got a job done that nobody would have ha wanted to deal with that day. And uh, over the last year, just being able to sit back and look at that and talk to people about it is, it's been helpful to get through the situation. We really appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you. And then, then the third person who really came in quickly to our campus was an off-duty LAPD officer, Gus Ramirez. Now, Gus, you and I spoke a little bit earlier, and uh, I just want to tell you how much we appreciate your willingness to come from back of the campus, not knowing what was happening here, to come down and offer your service and your aid to us on that day. So we just really want to thank you and offer this, again, this token of appreciation to you for being here with us. Thank you. I'm, I'm honored um, to receive this. Like uh, Dan said, the real heroes are the students and the staff that uh, they, were, they were brave. They stepped up to the plate when they needed to. Um, you know, I have two sons that come to Saugus High and I hold Saugus close to my heart. Thank you. Really, thank you. So these are three gentlemen who uh, really stepped up when they didn't have to, but they did. Now, we also want to recognize all of the work and all of the energy that our Saugus staff put in. So we have as well a plaque that we're gonna have Mr. Wade Williams come and accept on behalf of the Saugus High School staff. So Mr. Williams, we just, like I said, we want we appreciate you being here representing the entire staff at Saugus High School. Uh, you know, it's an honor to accept this plaque on behalf of the faculty that were here that morning and put the students' safety above their own, who shepherded their classes to the church on the corner so they could eventually be shuttled to Central Park who stayed at Central Park until the last student was reunited with their parent or guardian. Although I'm not the most, the worthiest person to accept this, so many were more brave than I, Jim, Caitlin, Terry, I do so with sincere humility. None of us will forget the events of that morning, November 14th, but rather than allow the tragedy to hold us down and make us eternal victims, it's made us stronger and more resilient than many of us thought we were. Thank you very much. Thank you for representing the staff, Mr. Williams. In addition to all of the other first responders that we have recognized recently, we also want to spend a, send a special thank you to the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff's Station. And with us today, we have Captain Diaz, who oversees the station. And we just want to offer this plaque of gratitude to you for all the work that you and your staff do here in Santa Clarita for everybody to keep us well and safe day in and day out. We just really appreciate everything you guys do now, and especially what you did for us on November 14th. Well, thank you, Marcus. You know, I really appreciate it. You know, um, what a lot of people probably don't know is we have quite a few graduates from uh, Saugus High School at our station. And uh, you know, the, the events on November 14th really hit home uh, for the entire station, especially because most people uh, at the station live in the community. And again, we had a lot actually go to this high school. So it really hit home. Um, I think it's safe to say that Santa Clarita Station will always stand with you, always be united with you, and uh, always be Saugus strong with you. And uh, we're always here for you, and we appreciate the partnership that we've, our long-lasting partnership with not only Saugus High School, but of course the entire William S. Hart uh, School District. So with that, on behalf of Sheriff Alex Villanueva and the entire uh, Sheriff Station, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
So for a while now, we've been offering thanks to many people who took part in uh, taking care of Saugus High School, helping us and keeping us safe and sound uh, back on November 14. One other group of individuals who we hold tremendously dear and special to us are the firefighters from our local station, number 111. So at this time, I'd like to offer this token of thanks, the shadow box to Captain Doherty, who oversees station 111 and ask him to share anything he might like at this time. Thank you very much. That's beautiful. Well, on behalf of all the guys, all three shifts at Fire Station 111, I'd like to say thank you. We appreciate this very much, and uh, it's our hometown school. Thank you. I want you to know we love you guys, and we're always going to be supporting you. And we thank you for what you did to come here for us on the 14th, stepping into what we know was a hot zone and putting your own safety um, in your back pocket, essentially, and being willing to risk yourselves and come to help us. So we will always appreciate and thank you guys. So this, this space we have here at Saugus is very special to all of us. And it's especially nice to know that we have so many men and women who are currently serving and protecting us as first responders, both all in fire, paramedics, law enforcement, and in our military as well, that we get to recognize so many members of the Saugus family who day in and day out keep us all safe and protect us. So this place is very, very special to us in our hearts, and we're happy to be able to put a new plaque honoring everybody who took part in taking care of us on November 14th. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. As you remember Gracie and Dominic, we celebrate their lives in a number of ways. And one of these ways is through music and song. Again, we ask students to participate by submitting an audition that reflects our theme of unity of community. Now, please join me in welcoming Saugus High School sophomore, Katie Sutherland, as she sings Rise Up by Andre Day. Afraid. And we'll 
will do it a thousand times again Thank you, Katie. The city of Santa Clarita plays a central role in our unity of community. They have been present since last year's vigil and continue to be present in keeping us Saugus strong. In September, the city council voted to add an honorarium of Gracie Muehlberger and Dominic Blackwell to the name of Central Park. We cannot thank the city enough for their support. From the city, we now welcome Mayor Cameron Smythe. Good evening. I'm Santa Clarita Mayor Cameron Smythe. And I wanted to start by thanking the Blackwell family, the Muehlberger family, and Principal Ferry for inviting me to be a part of tonight's event. Each and every one of us remembers exactly where we were on November 14th, 2019, when we first knew our community had changed forever. Whether you were on campus at Saugus High, a first responder, a parent, or a community member, we will never forget that Thursday that began so bright, but ended so dark. However, out of that darkness came a new hope and unity here in Santa Clarita. As events were unfolding, we saw our community come together like no other time, doing whatever we could to lend a hand, a shoulder, whatever kind of support our community members needed, particularly those who were affected by this tragedy. Almost immediately, neighbors and friends banded together to plan a community-wide vigil for Dominic and Gracie, as well as students injured in the shooting at Central Park. Through unity of community, the Saugus Strong Vigil was an event not just for the thousands of people at Central Park, but the tens of thousands more that tuned in to watch and show their support from around the world. Over the past year, we have seen this unity of community strengthen in Santa Clarita. Businesses have raised money for students and their families, while those who were previously strangers are now brothers and sisters for life. Earlier this year, the City Council and I worked with the Muehlbergers and Blackwells, and we are proud to permanently honor Gracie and Dominic by adding their names to Central Park, the site of the Saugus Strong Vigil, and a safe haven for hundreds of students, staff, and faculty members that November morning. As we continue through our Saugus Strong Unity of Community event, please keep Dominic, Gracie, and all those affected by last year's tragedy in your hearts and mind. Remember, we are Santa Clarita, and we are Saugus Strong. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Mayor Smythe. Last year, Saugus High School had so many community service organizations on campus to help students and staff. Assistant Principal Genevieve Peterson Henry will take a moment to recognize and thank these community members. We want to extend a special thank you to SCV yoga instructor Elizabeth Doan and for the services she provided to our students and staff. We want to thank Centurion graduate and owner of Yoga Yoga, Danica Lynch for all the hours she invested into our Saugus community. Thank you to Eric Lewin for sharing mindfulness practices with us. Service dogs played a big role in our recovery. Thank you to Pam English and her lab Ember for being present. Thank you to retired Heart District teacher Vicki Kaplan for sharing Flora, a dog she rescued with us as Flora helped us heal. And thank you to John and Moses for being on campus on so many occasions, allowing and helping us with our recovery. Thank you to all of you who helped. Thank you, Mrs. Peterson Henry. When students return to campus, they will immediately recognize changes made to the school's legacy wall and quad. At this time, we would like to introduce former Saugus High School principal Bill Boldy and current principal Vince Ferry, as together they will rededicate our school's quad and legacy wall. 
Hello, I'm Vince Ferry, principal of Saugus High School. With me is former principal of Saugus High School, Mr. Boldy. Tonight, we take a moment to rededicate Saugus High School's quad, and more importantly, Saugus High School's legacy wall. Those familiar with, familiar with Saugus High School understand that the quad and legacy wall serve as a centerpiece of our school's culture. It's a place where students congregate, where award ceremonies are held, and where the spirit of Saugus High School can be felt. And at the very top of our quad stands our legacy wall, with the names of students gone entirely too soon. But they always remain present in our hearts, minds, and community. Restoring the quad and the legacy wall to the appropriate levels of reverence it deserves was a collective effort. And I want to take a moment to thank some people who demonstrated love, care, and a lot of support in making this project happen. These simple thank yous are not enough, but please know you are very much appreciated. Thank you to Amy Daniels and the Wish Foundation from the very start to the very ending, making this project a priority. Thank you to Home Depot and Green's Nursery for the most generous donations. Thank you to Centurion Foundation parent, Amy Belcher, for your design of the Legacy Wall. Thank you to Scott Gore, Gus Rocha, Chuck Ohala, and to our project man manager, Barbara Boulevard. On behalf of Saugus High School's community, thank you for your much appreciated support. Now at this time, I want to invite Principal Boldy to share a few words and insights regarding our legacy wall. And thank you, Mr. Ferry, for offering me an opportunity to be here today to join in this celebration. You know, as I walk across this campus and reflect back on how much this place has meant to me in my life, I just realize how much uh, this has been such a blessing. 32 years at Saugus High School has been something that has just made, made me who I am today. Uh, you know, my, my daughters and my sons all graduated from Saugus High. My, my wife uh, is a Saugus alum. I have a daughter-in-law and a sister-in-law, and I have a granddaughter who is here as a sophomore now, and I have a grandson who will be here in just a couple of years. As I look around, I see in terms of um, the transformation of this campus, this is really a beautiful place, and you and your staff have done a great job. But you know what? This, the buildings and the facilities isn't what makes the school special to me. To be honest with you, it's the people. The people I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to be able to work with every day, the students, the teachers, the staff members, the, the parents, the business partners, you know, they, they created amazing memories for me. Well, this legacy wall that's here, um, it really was established so that we would never forget the lives of those who came before us. And at the same time, it's a constant reminder um, that life is precious and it can be taken away from us at any moment in a blink of an eye. We all go through these stages of life where we think we're gonna live forever. And some of us often think that uh, we're immune to the catastrophes that could come our way. But the truth is we can't presume life because we can't predict death. The circumstances of life are totally out of our hands. The students who are being remembered here today and they left behind families and those families deeply cared for them and they loved them. We're talking about moms and dads and grandparents and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles. And we're also talking about good friends, friends whose hearts are still broken and they ache every day. And in closing, I would just say, may we never forget those who came before us, those whose lives were lost. And may we always embrace an attitude of compassion and love for others and love for those who are around us every single day. Thank you very much. God bless. Mr. Boldy, thank you so much for being a part, not only of this remembrance and rededication, but just for staying a constant presence within our Saugus High School community. I hope you know how much we appreciate you here at Saugus High School. 
Now at this time, we're gonna start with the most important part of our rededication. And that's the reading of the names of children on our legacy wall. At the end, we will take a pause for remembrance, reflection, and prayer. Let's begin. Brett Churchill. Kevin English. Adam Buzian. Jackson Clark. Chad Buckley. Daniel Lieberman. C.G. McBroom. Robert Smith. Sheldon Bell. Amanda Larson. Andrew Rhodes. Lauren Blair. Jennifer Stift. Christian Sabuga. Mia Lamone. Dominic Blackwell. Gracie Muehlberger. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today in the rededication of our school quad and our legacy wall. We appreciate your support, your continued su support, and together we will continue to be Saga Strong. Thank you, Mr. Boldy and Mr. Ferry. On November 14th, we had three students who were critically injured during the tragedy. As a student body, we are inspired by their courage, leadership, and resilience. I don't know if they fully understand how much their positive attitude and can-do spirit is helping us all in our recovery. They inspire us each and every day. At this time, we are going to hear from these three amazing Saugus High School students, Mia Tretta, Addie Kegley, and Andrew Gardetto. Hello, my name is Mia Tretta, and just like every one of you, my world was turned upside down on November 14th. I was shot which is why I was asked to speak today. And if I'm being honest, it's not fair. Each one of your stories needs to be heard, not just the three who are hurt. Every one of your stories is valid. Since that day, our community has been broken. Maybe some people don't understand why all of a sudden you're sad or mad or constantly tired, but I'm here to tell you that I understand and you're not alone. You need to know that what you're feeling is valid and real, and most of all, normal. Personally, that took a while for me to understand. I thought feelings and crying were gross, lame, and unnecessary. And that stereotype is still sometimes hard for me to look past. But if you're feeling this way, I think it's important to know that it's normal. I'm no therapist, and I'm only 16, but I'm speaking to you, not only with the wisdom of my own experience, but the experiences of students from Parkland, Columbine, Sandy Hook, and concert goers from Route 91. I know what I've felt in my heart this past year, and I know that I'm not alone. It's okay to still be sad, but it's also okay to be happy. We can move forward and be happy again without ever forgetting. I'm not just talking to the students of Saugus, but also, Hart, Valencia, Canyon, West Ranch, Castaic, and Golden Valley. We were there for each other. You may not have been a student at Saugus, but many of you stood in solidarity with us. You understood us, and we will always be grateful. You are the ones that I think of when I hear the word community. On November 17th, there was a vigil at Central Park, a place that will soon officially read in memoriam of Gracie Muehlberger and Dominic Blackwell. It was the largest gathering at Central Park ever, where thousands of community members gathered to mourn and heal. I wasn't able to attend because I was still in the hospital, but if I could have gone, this is what I would say about my dear friend. Dominic Michael Blackwell was probably the weirdest person I've 
ever met, which could say something about me because we click so fast. I was new to Arroyo Seiko Junior High and I knew no one. I got lost about five times on my way to math class and when I finally found it, there was only one seat left in the back next to a kid with a SpongeBob shirt and his feet up on his desk. I sat down and he immediately jumped to his feet and said, hey, I'm Dominic Michael Swoosh Blackwell, like Michael Jordan, but without the height. I replied with, um, hey, I'm Mia. Do you always introduce yourself like that? He said, no, I'm just trying it out. You like? From that day on, we became best of friends. And that's really the type of person he was. No matter who you were, if you were near him, he'd introduce himself and immediately make you smile. Whether it was stealing my food, walking me to class, or kissing me on the cheek before he left pretending to be my mom, making up a, ha a five minute handshake, or competing for participation points in Miss LaJuice's Spanish class, we always had the best of time. I will never find a better friend than that goober. As stinky as he may have been, he has always been loyal, honest, and true. We love you, Dami. We together aren't just a community, we're a family. And I would like to thank all of you, not just for listening and helping me move forward, but for being a part of my family. I would also like to give a special thanks to Miss LaJusa, not only my favorite teacher since the first day of ninth grade, but also the person I ran to during the worst moment of my life. She has helped me in so many ways and I appreciate it so much. Finally, I would just like to say that I'm not okay. You might not be okay either. Kids who weren't even there that day might not be okay, but I promise you, we will be. Together, we will be. And we will always be Saga Strong. It's crazy to me that it's already been one year. It feels like yesterday yet forever ago. The two beautiful people that lost their lives that day will always be remembered. Gracie was my best friend for about six years. We met in life group and then soon realized we were neighbors. From that day on, we spent almost every day together. Dominic and I started becoming close in the beginning of the school year. We met in Spanish, started hanging out at lunch, and eventually outside of school. He was the funniest, craziest, and most passionate person I've ever met. Gracie and Dominic were some of the most amazing people in the world, and they changed my life for the better, and I'm so blessed to have the opportunity to have gotten to know both of them. I would like to thank everyone who was on site that day, including all of the Saga staff, first responders, police, EMTs, and more. Miss Holt was the teacher I ran to that day. She protected me, helped me, held me, and comforted me in my worst times. She's such a blessing, and I'm so glad she was the teacher to help me that day. I'm so thankful for the whole Saga's community, all of the support that I've received over the last year and many others have received. I'm thankful for Mia and Andrew for always being there for me no matter what. I'm thankful for my parents who have supported me even in my worst times. Today is a day we only would come, but didn't think would come so fast. One year ago, I send my deepest love and condolences to the Muehlbergers and the Blackwells. Today is a day of remembrance, love, and especially strength. Hello, uh, thank you for being with us today. Joining me today, I have Andrew Gardetto. Many of you already know Andrew. Andrew is one of our students who was critically injured last year on November 14th. But more importantly, Andrew is a person who has really demonstrated to our school community what it means to recover. He showed up to school every single day with a positive attitude and really led by example. And wanted to take this opportunity first to thank you, Andrew, for everything you've done for Saugus High School, through your leadership and just being available to other students. Um, looking back on this year that's been so hard, I know for a lot of people, but especially you having been injured, who are some people in your life that just have really helped you? Um, well, some people in my life um, are my friends, my family, and I just like to thank all my ROTC friends and Young Marine friends who've helped me get through all of this and get past it with a positive attitude. Good. I know you've been uh, a part of ROTC for some time and it's an important part of who you are. What is it about ROTC that's 
helped you with your recovery? Um, everyone there just has a positive attitude and a positive outlook on a lot of things. So they kind of just, whenever I feel down or don't have, um, or not having a good day, they'll just come up to me and help me um, have a more positive outlook on that day. That's great. So earlier today, Andrew had the opportunity to meet uh, the firefighters, the paramedics from Station 111 who helped him uh, last year. And I'm just curious, Andrew, how did that feel meeting these these people who helped you so much? It was great. Um, I really don't have the words to describe it, but it was just amazing to meet them and finally thank them for what they did. And I know you've tried a couple of times making contacts. That must have been extra special to finally meet them. Yes, it was. Great. You know, um, Andrew, a term that I hear a lot of in our community is the term Saga Strong. What does Saga Strong mean to you? Um, to me, Saga Strong means like the community coming together and helping each other um, pretty much stay strong through all of this. So that, that unity, that strength, that leaning on each other is something that you've taken away from this ex unfortunate experience. Yes. Um, so, you know, we had our tragedy. We're in the world of COVID. Uh, what do you miss most about being on campus right now? Um, I miss being with my friends and hanging out with them and pretty much just sharing the day with them and all the good times. Great. Um, Andrew demonstrated so much courage last year, both on the day of our tragedy and afterwards. His parents have just done an amazing job raising such a great young man. And uh, Andrew, again, on behalf of the students at Saugus High School, the staff at Saugus High School, we thank you for your leadership, your courage, and just helping us all with our recovery. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you guys. The phrase Saugus Strong has been a source of campus and community strength. We asked current and former Centurions what Saugus Strong means to them. Saugus Strong to me was the unification following the shooting. It was the other schools in the district flying our flags at their sports games. It was us as a student body coming together to show love and support for one another. That is something so special which exists nowhere else in the world, and we can't lose that. On the one year anniversary of the shooting, we need to continue to reflect and honor and continue to grow and despite the many challenges we've faced. Saga's strong is a message saying no matter how many hardships we face, no matter how many global pandemics we go through, that we as a Saugus community will remain strong and compassionate towards one another. Saugus Strong to me is when the whole community comes together to uh, support each other, when you know we could all use a little help or a little guidance. What Saugus Strong is to me is the unity of our community. It is us putting all our strength together to keep us through these tough times. Remembering how families and students from all over came to support Saugus families and Saugus students. We were all Saugus strong then and we're all still Saugus strong now. Our community uniting and spreading kindness as we deal with the tragic events of November. We learn from our experiences and it makes us a better person. And we all know that life is too precious. Community coming together as one after a tragedy and standing up and sticking for each other. The feeling of being supported and loved at Saugus High School by the rest of our community. The community comes together in the face of adversity. Coming together to be there for each other. Community. Unity. It means that collective struggle. It means we're all going through things of our own and we're all going to help each other grow and we're all going to help each other lift ourselves out of the sad times. In honor of Gracie and Dominic, Saugus High School's ASB and Saugus High School's Smile SCV Club has three events coming up to support our community at events that we would really appreciate your help with. Saugus High School's ASB will be sponsoring a food drive. Please plan on bringing non-perishable items to Saugus High School the week of November 30th between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. During this time, we will also be collecting blankets for Project Linus, 
who graciously donated so many blankets to us at the time of the tragedy. Saugus High School's Smile SCV Club is sponsoring a holiday toy drive. We would greatly appreciate it if you could donate a new toy and deliver it to Saugus High School that same week of November 30th between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. These are just a couple of ways that you can help serve our community. The idea for the theme of unity of community for the one year remembrance came from the Muehlberger and Blackwell families. A major reason for choosing this theme is to remember and honor Dominic and Gracie through recognizing people who keep our community strong and united through service. At this time, we want to introduce students from across the valley who make service a priority. Hi, I'm Jordan Thompson. I'm a senior at Canyon and I serve the community by making sure that people who are less fortunate have the necessities they need to lead a quality life. Hi, my name is Yara Hussein and I serve my community in many ways. To begin with, one of the activities that I've had the pleasure of doing is making blankets for Project Linus in seventh grade. I serve my community by volunteering as a Girl Scout. I serve the community by actively trying to end the stigma behind mental health through being president of Burn Change to Mind on campus. Hi, I'm Natalie Petrillo from La Mesa Junior High School, and I serve the community by picking up my trash and not leaving anything behind. I serve the community by making care packages for homeless people. Hi, I'm Jordan Jose, and I serve my community by being a part of Jack and Jill of America in Santa Clarita. I serve the community by helping to produce my school's podcast, the Heart to Heart Podcast, which educates and informs the students, parents, and staff about what's going on at our campus. Hi, I'm Samara Stamps. I'm a senior at Valencia High School, and I serve the community by leading and starting different organizations like Service for Smiles, Key Club, and BSU. I serve the community by being a good role model and putting positivity out into the world. Currently, I'm working towards the rank of Eagle Scout. Now, a big part of that is to do a community service project, and I'm doing one at one of our local churches, and I'm going to be renovating and beautifying uh, the, pra the pastor's prayer garden there for different members of the church to come and enjoy and have a quiet place to pray and reflect. Hi, my name is Miriam Grace, and some ways I serve my community are donating to local shelters and helping us sum up our Santa Clarita events such as the Roof Rally. I serve the community by giving my time to nonprofit organizations such as the Children's Hunger Fund. I serve my community through my artwork. In a time of hardship, my artwork let the students of Saugus know that Golden Valley will always be with them and that they are never alone. We now welcome the Muehlberger family with the love, support, and prayers of the entire Santa Cruz Valley and beyond. Good afternoon. My name is Brian Muehlberger and this is my wife, Cindy Muehlberger. Thank you all for joining us for the first ever Unity of Community event. It was supposed to be a live event at Central Park where we came together in person to remember, celebrate, and give back to our community. But due to the current pandemic situation, we had to move the event to a virtual one. We hope to do one in person on May 15th, 2021. So stay tuned for more. Now, as most of you know by now, Cindy and I are the proud parents of Gracie Ann Muehlberger one of the two innocent children, including Dominic Michael Blackwell, who tragically lost their lives in the shooting on November 14th, 2019. It's been a very tough year to say the least, and the pandemic hasn't helped. If anything, it's made it worse and harder to deal with things. Our courageous and loving sons, Riley, who is serving in the United States Navy, and Brady, who is a senior this year, have had to endure more than most teenagers should have to in their lives. They have shown us what strength and understanding looks like. They have not only dealt with their own grief, but also continue to support us and give us the room to figure life out. We are so very proud of both of them and love them more than words can say. In the immediate hours, days, weeks, and months following the morning of November 14th, 2019, our family was forced into what I can only describe as a deep fog. Things just slowed down and got very gloomy. As is expected, we were overcome with massive grief and sadness, and we continue to be overwhelmed with extreme and regular grief and despair. Not a second of the day goes by where we aren't thinking about Gracie and the emptiness left in our hearts. However, we were and continue to be lifted up by you, our community, the community of Santa Carita. Our family, friends, neighbors, and each of you have carried us. 
I know deep in my heart that I would not be standing here sharing my thoughts with you today if it wasn't for you being by our sides during this very dark time of our lives. We remember in the weeks following November 14th, receiving tons of cards, emails, texts, phone calls, and care packages, including flowers and food and gift cards and handcrafted memorabilia honoring our beautiful daughter or giving us inspiration while showcasing your love and thoughtfulness for us. With every day came a new gift of love, caring, and support. Many of you were also dealing with sorrow, grief, and despair. But together, we continue to take each day, one day at a time, and move forward. I will never be able to thank the hundreds or even thousands of you that have supported us in your own unique and loving ways. It has truly been a deep and satisfying feeling of love that was unlike anything ever. Then, on August 25th, 2020, we received a unanimous approval from the City Council of Santa Clarita to append the name of Central Park signage with In Memoriam of Gracie Muehlberger and Dominic Michael Blackwell. This was the first and possibly the only moment of real peace that we have felt in the last 12 months. Thank you, Mayor Cameron Smythe, the rest of the City Council, the entire staff of City of Santa Clarita, and the board members of SCV Water for hearing us and taking appropriate action and delivering on what your community desired. Now let us never forget that this will be an unspeakable tragedy that should never have happened, especially at school, a place where our children go and are supposed to be safe and protected, allowing them to spend time with friends while learning and growing into thriving young adults. None of the children that survived should have had to ever endure an event such as this in their lifetimes. But this is an event that will forever shape us and each and every one of us will hopefully make many changes for the greater good and do some great things in this world. And this is exactly what Gracie and Dominic would have wanted. We were told by many of their friends, as well as many of you, that Gracie and Dominic represent love, happiness, joy, unity, and community. Though the horrible acts of that day are tragic, sad, and traumatic, they themselves, these young, innocent, loving human beings, who are no longer with us, are not a sign of tragedy or sadness, but a sign of hope for our community and our world. Let us never forget their names, their personalities, what they brought to this community, and how they touched their friends, fellow students, and this community in a special way. Over the last year, we have formed the Gracie Strong Foundation. Now it's still in its infancy, but the mission of Gracie Strong Foundation is to empower, inspire, and support individuals to speak up, realizing their voice is powerful and matters, and enable them to fight for their values and have their voices heard and impact change for their greater future. We believe we will do this through inspirational events, relevant programs and training, actionable social movement campaigns, and by developing key platforms that support the mission. We will also support and partner with like-minded agencies and groups to bring the mission of Gracie Strong to life. Over the last year, we have done a number of things to give back to the community, while also showcasing and supporting the mission of Gracie Strong. First of all, we have donated thousands of dollars to multiple GoFundMe campaigns in support of other families that have also experienced horrific tragedy. In December of 2019, we had the first ever Caroling with Gracie event this event brought together the community in a joyful way while driving around singing Christmas carols, something Gracie loved to do, while collecting over a thousand canned goods and over $400 in cash donations that went to those in need within our community. We plan to do this annually and are always seeking advocates and support to bring this to each of your neighborhoods. If you'd like to participate, please email us at info at graciestrong.org. It is a fun and joyful event. Additionally, since Gracie used to attend Valencia Tutors Learning Center here in Santa Clarita, they also were very helpful in her academic struggles. We decided to offer an annual scholarship to Valencia Tutors. Because of their generosity, they have also decided to match our gift, and so we'll be offering two annual scholarships to Saugus High School students in need. We hope to grow our ability to do more with them over time and expand this to other high schools. 
We've also donated funds and care packages in partnership with the DMB Foundation to a number of local children battling disease. And lastly, we launched the first ever Gracie Speak Up and Speak Out video challenge. We had over 20 video submissions answering questions such as, why don't teens speak up when they see someone being bullied, sad, hurt, or alone? And how do you convince teens to speak up for one another and to not be afraid to ask for help when they aren't able to fix the problem on their own? The videos we received came from all of the grades at Saugus High School, from freshman to senior. They were very powerful and moving. It was extremely hard to select our winners. Though we had originally planned to select four winners, we decided to select five. Our winners were Olivia Acalina, freshman, Connor Gilbertson, sophomore, Sophia Russell, sophomore, Haley Barr, junior, and Jacob Kennard, senior. Each of them received a brand new Apple iPhone, plus some really cool Gracie Strong and Speak TF Up swag. If we can raise the necessary funds, we would love to expand this to other schools next year. Though we've done a number of things, we feel we are just getting started and believe we can do so much more to honor our precious daughter, Gracie, and give back to our community. In order to make this happen, we need your help. You can do this in any of three ways, volunteer, act, or donate. If you wanna volunteer your expertise, whether it be in web development, fundraising, marketing support, or other areas, we could use your help. Please feel free to email me at info at If you wanna take action, please share the word about Gracie Strong via social media with your family, friends, and coworkers. And if you feel so inclined, you can always visit graciestrong.org and donate to support the launch and growth of the foundation. The proceeds will go to the launch of the foundation and development of the key platforms and capabilities. To stay up to date, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Gracie Strong Now and Facebook at facebook.com slash Gracie Strong Now. With your help, we will be able to achieve the mission of Gracie Strong, honor our daughter Gracie, and truly make a difference in our community and the world in which we live. Again, thanks for all that you have done for us, and we love all of you. Thanks again for being a part of this first of many Unity of Community events, and we look forward to this becoming an annual event that brings together the community in an unprecedented way. Thank you. Thank you to the Muehlberger family. We will always be with you. Before we hear from the Blackwell family, the Saugus High School Choir, under the direction of Ms. Katie Holt, wants to dedicate a song to the Muehlbergers, the Blackwells, and the entire community titled, Light. We need some light. First of all, we need some light. You can't sit here in the dark and all alone. It's a sorry sight. It's just you and me. Night after night, we'd sit and wait for the morning light. But we've waited for too long for all that's wrong to be made right. Day after day, wishing all our cares away. Trying to fight the things we feel, but some hearts never heal. Some ghosts are never gone, but we go on. We still go
day dawn We'll wonder how we wandered for so long, so blind The wasted world we thought we knew The light may kill remnants Thank you, choir. With the same support, love, and prayers from our entire community, we will now welcome the Blackwell family. One year ago today, we were forced to endure the unthinkable. In a single moment, our lives were upended and the dreams we created for our firstborn son were stolen from us and shattered. Replaced with violent devastation and the most overwhelming emptiness, an emptiness that words cannot reach, a loss that we will never understand. We spent 12 agonizing months trying to hold on to the light that he gave us during the 14 short years we had with him. We've watched the slow minutes move forward and tried to keep up as birthdays, holidays, and anniversaries went with them. Dominic's birthday was September 11th, and on what would have been his 15th birthday, we gathered family and friends together to remember the bright and happy life Dominic lived so well in his 14 young years. And in these 12 months, we have done our best to honor every wish he ever uttered and every opinion we believe he would have given on matters that have now become an impossible reality. We laid Dominic to rest by setting his favorite personal effects by his side so that he can keep them with him forever. His resting place, a reimagined bikini bottom of his very own, will always be trimmed and decorated as his little brothers collect more beautiful pineapples, seashells, and flowers for him. We visit him every day. That is how we keep him close, every single day. The Saga Strong Vigil on November 17, 2019 at Central Park brought together over 15,000 souls in one place. It reached homes internationally. It reached hundreds of thousands of viewers across the globe and gave the entire world a glimpse of a community united. Dominic and Gracie did that. And I can just imagine Dominic bragging about that accomplishment, about all the people that came to see him, all the support from around the world, the community united for Dominic and Gracie. That moment mattered. If you knew Dominic, you remembered how goofy and silly he was. He was just a tremendous joy to be around. He always took the time to make sure that you were smiling or laughing too, even if he didn't know you. If he noticed that you were having a hard time, he was going to make it better. And Dominic didn't care if people might make fun of him for having a great time. As long as he could make you smile, he was happy. He was so bright. Dominic was always easy to spot in the crowd. Just look for the bright orange Reese sweatshirt or loud, colorful SpongeBob socks. And there he was. Or you could just close your eyes and listen for that crazy infectious laugh that we all know and love and miss so very, very much. More than possessions, Dominic really knew and understood the value of quality time whether it be with his brothers, his best friend Mia, or any other friends that he was able to enjoy being around. As long as you were taking full advantage of enjoying the moment and having a great time, that's all that mattered to Dominic. We started a foundation in Dominic's honor to help the world know him better. 
to help other children who need the most help, to carry on the joy and laughter that he marched through life with, to assist schools in cultivating an inclusive environment throughout all levels of academia, for children that may be experiencing adversity in any way or want to spread good in their community, to bring a permanent end to that lonely feeling that we have all experienced at one point or another in our lives, to work toward a world where everyone knows how and when to ask for help and how and when to give help, do more for our children, do better for our community, including every child. Through the foundation, we have not only been given an incredible opportunity to stand beside the same community who stood in solidarity with us in the aftermath of the Saugus High School shooting, but we also have the chance to keep working closely with the school that Dominic was so excited to attend in his freshman year. Through the foundation's initial essay contest, we were able to provide necessary distance learning educational support to four of Dominic's peers, and we will continue to provide support education, safety initiatives, and so many fun activities through the pathways and collaborations we will cultivate under the Dominic Michael Blackwell Foundation. This foundation has become a part of Dominic's legacy. It has given us purpose as parents and has allowed our family some semblance of solace because we know that this is a meaningful way to keep Dominic's memory alive and to provide the world a glimpse of the laughter and light that was so distinctly Dominic. And we do these things knowing that it won't ever feel like we're doing enough. We will always try to do better, to do more for Dominic, because Dominic deserves so much more than he was given in this life. On the day that I lost my son, I promised him and our family that I would give everything of myself to keep this memory alive. That in spite of the immeasurable grief and confusion, I would make sure his baby brothers would never forget him. That the world would never forget him. And so I choose to invest my time in the foundation and in the fight for a suitable memory at Central Park, a park that Dominic loved to play at, a park that means so much to our family and the Muehlberger family, a family that we have grown so close to in the last 12 months, a family that shares our pain and our purpose, a family that is now an ex indelible extension of our own. We push through the sadness together and pick each other up when we fall, as we have so many times, and we always will. I am sharing this with you today because it is so important to acknowledge. As our families learn to walk through the losses of Dominic and Gracie and the futures they each had with them, we are also aware that we as a community have suffered so much loss. The horror of the school shooting is no longer a distant likelihood. It has reached our doorstep and touched us all. We face this aftermath together by acknowledging November 14th and the impact it's had on our community by take, talking about it and processing our own stages of grief by helping one another let go of that stigma that follows such a public tragedy and by supporting our younger children as they come of age in a generation of mass shootings and lockdown drills. This is how we build our strength, both individually and as a community, by moving through and learning from our most difficult moments by remembering that we are never alone. This is the message that we hope you keep with you always by sharing the most fragile, moments of our lives, we hope to strengthen the fabric of our community and strengthen the voices that will one day bring critical change to the culture and the stigma of the school shooting in this country, one day at a time. Thank you for being a part of this first of many Unity of Community events, and we look forward to this becoming an annual event that brings the community together in an unprecedented way. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you to the Blackwell family. We will always be with you. We want to thank you all for joining us in our Unity of Community Day. We hope this Unity of Community Day provided you with a chance to honor and remember Gracie and Dominic, as well as to reflect on the importance of how unity makes our community strong. And how Gracie and Dominic brought our community together as one. As we end Unity of Community Day, in honor of Gracie Muehlberger and Dominic Blackwell, Mia will be singing a song titled For Good as we observe remembrance photos. I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason 
bringing something we must learn and we are led to those who help us most to grow if we let them and we help them in return well i don't know if i believe that's true but i know i'm who i am today because i knew you like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes the sun like a stream that meets a boulder halfway through the woods who can say if i've been changed for the better but because i knew you i have been changed for good it well may be that we will never meet again in this lifetime so let me say before we part so much of me is made of what i learned from you you'll be with me like a handprint on my heart and now whatever way our stories end i know you have rewritten mine by being my friend like a ship blown from its mooring by a wind off the sea like a seed dropped by a sky bird in a distant wood who can say if i've been changed for the better but because i knew you because i knew you i have been changed for good and just to clear the air i ask forgiveness for the things i've done you blame me for but then i guess we know there's blame to share and none of it seems to matter anymore As it passes the sun, like a stream that meets the boulder halfway through the wood. Who can say if I've been changed for the better? I do believe I have been changed for the better. because i knew you because i knew you because i knew you i have been changed for
As a trauma-informed somatic mindful practitioner, I teach somatic wellness through the lens of yoga to students, educators, at-risk youth, and underprivileged communities. Yoga Yoga is a unique yoga shala. All the wonderful teachers specialize in movement, teaching classes ranging from hatha yoga to vinyasa to gentle, restorative, and the classes are for beginners and advanced students. One day we look forward to being with all of you once again, and if you would ever like to join us for a lovely class online, please visit yogayogaonline.com. Much love. What is Million Little? There are a million little opportunities. The moments of joy and connection, healing and support. The heart of our organization is the youth, children and families we serve. We transform lives through creativity and we cannot do this alone. Calling all leaders, change seekers, artists, calling you. Go to our website to learn more about the million little ways you can make a difference in your community. Yeah, good one. Hi, I'm John, and this is Moses. Thank you for letting us be a part of your Unity of Community event. As a therapy dog team, it was our privilege to visit Saugus High School on many occasions. We enjoyed giving the staff and students a chance to meet Moses to relax and decompress during a very difficult time. We both miss our Saugus family and look forward to seeing you all in the future. Hi, my name's Pam English, and I have with me my therapy dog, Ember. Ember is an 11-year-old Labrador retriever. She was one of the initial dogs who came onto Saugus campus with some of her other therapy dog friends and continued to come through uh, the month of January and a little bit into February. So you could find us here sometimes in the morning, at brunch, or at lunch. So we continue to support Saugus because I actually have a grandson that attends here. I have a friend who's a teacher um, who's raised a guide dog, the same place that Ember came from, and we were able to bring his dog back to him on the first day that Saugus returned to school. Um, so it was our pleasure to be able to support everyone. Ember is a very unique dog in the fact that she reads the vibes off of people around her. And if somebody's really feeling down, she gets that, and she'll stick close. Of course, her signature is a belly rub, so anybody coming over to visit her has to give her that belly rub, uh, which she really cherishes. And it, as we continue to support the community, we were actually going to some of the other schools uh, that were filling some of the, the vibes of the time, and our pleasure to watch some of the smiles start to appear uh, as we came into the Wellness Center and other places within the school. So we actually, she kind of feels a little down now. She was excited to walk onto campus today. She definitely recognized the campus to be able to come back uh, and come to her, to her, her people. So thank you so much for allowing us to bring those smiles of joy. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Doan, and I'm a yoga instructor here in the Santa Clarita Valley. I'm so proud that I was able to offer yoga and meditation to the Saugus High School students and athletes in the wake of last year's shooting. Thank you so much to Saugus High School and to the parents for trusting me with your children. They were and are amazing humans that showed tremendous strength after such a traumatic event. It was an honor to share the practice of yoga with them, so thank you. Hey guys, name's Eric E.J. Lewin. If you remember me, I was the movement coach here for Saga Strong, but I'm also an energetic body worker, healer, and a coach for human optimization. I take a spiritual ride with people to get into the healing that everyone needs, that everyone needs something different. So let's explore it and heal together. Thank you. Hi, my name is Vicki Kaplan, and my therapy dog was Flora. 
I was a teacher at Rio Norte Junior High for over 16 years and retired in June of 18. At that point, I decided I wanted to give my time back to my community that had been so wonderful to both my family and myself. I did this with my best friend, Flora. She was a rescue from the Lancaster shelter, and I always wondered who rescued who. She had so much love to give that I wanted her to be able to share that with teens and adults alike. We visited both schools and hospitals on a weekly basis, and other than teaching, it was the most rewarding experience that I could participate in. Flora unfortunately passed unexpectedly in August, but I know that she fulfilled her destiny.